and welcome to this basic sketch tutorial on how to set up colors, uh, colors as layer styles and color variables. So if we have a little look at what we're about to create, obviously you can see a bit of a grid here uh, of sort of a primary color uh, and then a few semantic colors like an error, warning, uh, success, and then we've got a dark and a light tone here as well. Uh, if we have a look at the layer style structure we're going to set up, uh, you can see at this document, uh, we've got our colors nicely organized in little folders there with everything ordered um, by, first of all, ordered by how we see them uh, on the artboard here, but also the tones are ordered uh, from darkest to most transparent as well. But alongside the layer styles, we're also going to set up uh, color variables. Uh, if we look at the color variables drop down list here, we see we've got the, the base color for each of these uh, saved as a variable as well. So we'll also have a look at how we do that. Uh, so let's get started. So as you can see, this is a completely fresh file. Uh, if we go into our components tab, you can see we've got no symbols, no textiles, no layer styles, no color variables. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and create our first artboard and call it colors. I'm in the UK, so there's a U in it. Deal with it. Uh, let's make this 160, 160 even. There we go. Let's get rid of the border there. Um, give ourselves a bit more room and then just duplicate this a few times. Ooh. Okay, so I'm going to go with, I'm uh, going to create a primary color, error, warning, success, and then a dark and a light uh, shade down there as well. I'm going to go for a nice deep purple for mine, my primary color. For error, let's go for a, a red. That's generally accepted to be semantically correct. Let's get a nice yellow, oh, that's gross. <laughs> something more like that. Uh, let's go for something green. I'll do. And then I'm just going to go a sort of purpley tint to the dark color, not completely black. Um, so it's kind of in the same family as the primary. With the light, I'm just going to make that white. Um, let's pull in a background here so we can actually see it. All right, cool. So we've got our basic colors. Uh, but right now, these are just obviously stationary blocks um, with no connection to anything else. So if I wanted to use this color elsewhere, the only way I have right now is just to copy the, the hex, make a new one and copy it into a different place. And this obviously works, you know, you can copy over it as many times as you want. Um, but if you then change this one, for example, to uh, with, a, with a pink maybe, obviously now the other one hasn't changed because there's, there's no connection between the two. So one thing we can do to maintain consistency in our designs is to use color variables. So I'm going to select my primary here, uh, just hit create color variable. Now you want to name them something meaningful rather than just the, the hex code value uh, as it's much easier for, for reference later on. So let's go ahead and create that. So now what I could do, if I wanted to use this color elsewhere, create a rectangle like that, hit primary, and we've set it up there. And if I wanted to change this, uh, I could go into here, edit variable, change it to whatever you want, an orange, update, and you see it updates everywhere. So now you've got a link between these two. If you think about the implications of, of how many times you could possibly use your a color throughout design, then 
this could save massive amounts of time changing each and every single one of them. So let's just quickly do the same for the other colors. And with color variables, you can also edit uh, and manage your, your variables from the components tab over here. If you head on to the rightmost tab, you can see all the color variables we've set up are now accessible here. And you can change them however you like. And if you head back to pages, you'll see that's automatically updated. We don't want to do that. So let's just undo those. Okay, now another thing I like to do with my colors is actually save them as layer styles as well as color variables. And this allows you to, to swap and change them a little bit easier later on when we create more complex components, uh, such as um, a button, for example, you know, a very simple component, but this could use multiple layer styles um, in its background which would all be linked to the original setup of those colors so let's go ahead and set up our layer styles so layer styles will effectively save anything you've entered uh, under the the style drop down here so anything from fills borders shadows inner shadows uh, and blur uh, so let's go ahead and start creating this if you hit the create new layer style button here um, now we just need to choose a name for our layer style. It's good practice to think about how you want to structure your naming convention here, because when you go to access these later on, uh, they will be basically via a drop down, um, and those folders will be determined by how you name this. So if you do say any string slash, that effectively creates a directory called color, and anything you write after that will be inside of the color directory. Uh, so I'm going to call this primary that's what, that's what we've been using so far uh, so let's go ahead and hit enter and that's saved so now we can see we have color we've just got primary inside of it let's go ahead and do the same for the rest of our colors okay so i've set up layer styles for the colors we've got at the moment uh, so if I just head into the appearance drop down here, you can see we've got all these options. If we expand this as well, we can see the color folder and inside of here, all of the colors we've set up so far. Okay, we're going to take this one step further now uh, by giving ourselves a few more options uh, in our color palette. So I'm just going to give ourselves a bit more room here. Um, we're going to effectively create nine different shades uh, for us to choose from later on in the project. So let's go ahead and duplicate these. Okay, so right now these are all primary colors, all connected via color variables and layer styles. So what we want to do uh, it's creates some lower opacity versions. Now with layer styles, you can also save opacity as well as everything under the, the style dropdown. Opacity is also saved as a, under the layer style. So right now everything is set to 100. Uh, but it's going to gradually decrease the opacity to go from a, obviously a solid darker shade of the color uh, to a weaker, almost transparent version of the color. I'm going to start by renaming this layer style. I'm going to add on another level to the directory. So we're going color primary and inside of this, I'm going to go with 900. And because this is sort of our base color, I'm just going to call it base as well. Okay. Now all these are set up as 900 base, but that's not exactly what we want. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead, take the second one here set the opacity to 72 and you can see once I've made a change 
it's not updated the other one directly, um, but it's letting us know that despite using this layer style, we've now changed it from what it's saved as. So it's giving us almost a little warning there. So it kind of wants us to either create a new one, update the existing, which would, if I, if I show that for a second, if I click update, it will update 900 base to the change I just made. We don't want to do that. Uh, or you could detach, which would completely detach it from the, the layer style. But I'm going to go ahead and create. Uh, I'm going to call this one 800. And there we go. Next one, so it's 48, create, and you might have guessed, 700. And I'm going to repeat this um, across the next. I'm going to repeat this across the row. Uh, so the next one, let's go 32, create. Okay, so we've set up that tonal palette uh, for our primary color. You can see if we click through these, these are all set up to our layer style. Now, you will notice that all of these are still connected to our color variable, which is really important because now, if we wanted to change, if we wanted to change the hue of all of these, so we wanted to change it to an orange family, for example, we only have to change it in one place uh, for it to be reflected everywhere. So for example, if I go to edit this variable and change it to uh, an orange of sorts, hit update, you can see all of the primaries are updated, but they still maintain the opacity we set up in the layer style. And this is really cool. I mean, everything we're doing here is really just trying to set up our files in a way that allows us to make file-wide changes uh, with as little effort as possible. So it allows us to just change our mind later on without needing to trawl through files to find everywhere we've, we've done something that we wanted to change. And that's really a, a really good comparison to, to CSS, for example. That's why you try and set, up, set things up so that you only have to change them in one place um, and not have to change it, not have to find every single um, little instance where you've used that. Of course, you know, if we're talking about in VS Code, you could obviously just control F or command F, whatever, to to find across the across the board. But even that uh, can be inconsistent and it's still another step that was just not necessary. So we're gonna repeat what we've done here um, for the rest of our colors. All right, so we've got those set up now. We've created the layer styles for each of the colors. Um, and if we select this one, for example, we've got a nice directory of options to choose from, which is very nice. Uh, I know I mentioned earlier, I wouldn't add numbers to here, um, but I did add numbers going through the, the colors so that we want our the dark color at least, or at least a strong color to be here in our preview. Now the preview will always choose the, the top option here uh, to show before you go into that directory. So if you had it the other way around, you would be you would have a low opacity and you'd only have the name to go by. But it's, it's useful to, to be able to see the, uh, the color there as well. So that's why I've done that. And I'm just gonna add numbers to these as well because I would like to control the order. So I'm gonna do this by going to the components tab up here uh, we're on layer styles uh, and you can see on the left here we can see the directory of these colors so we can look at all of them 
we can look at just the, the ones in color or we can go individually into these. I'm just gonna stay here uh, and I want primary to go first. So I'm gonna change primary here. And now all of these inside of here will effectively have been changed. So you can see we're now in color one primary. So all of them are inside there, which is really useful. So we don't have to change every single one individually. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add numbers for the rest of them as well, uh, in line with the order we have here. So now that aligns with the order we have here. If we look at our layer styles drop down again, there we go. Now I've got a nice consistent order. So there we go. That's how to basically set up uh, colors in Sketch using color variables and layer styles. Uh, we're going to expand on this uh, in the next few tutorials. Um, but I hope this was useful and I'll see you in the next one.